which is the second thing on the method. Um, yes. Ganache is just boiled cream and chocolate. We're making ganache use a high percentage of cocoa chocolate, like Whitaker's 72% or something, just because it tastes better when you make it all up. So you just boil it, and as soon as it's boiled, take it off so it doesn't burn, and then pour it over the chocolate. Um, and once that's done, I'm going to pour it onto a couple of these trays. I don't have a big enough tray, so I'm using this cake thing. Um, and then it goes in the fridge, but you need to make sure that it doesn't set in the fridge. It needs to be spreadable, so just keep an eye on it after that. And then after that, we'll go on to the Japanese. And a Japanese is just a meringue with ground hazelnuts or ground almonds or any nuts or anything in it. So um, it's quite crisp, so that when you layer it up with the ganache, it's quite decadent. So, if you don't like sweet things, then no, just don't eat it. <laughs> I'll have it. <laughs> so, yeah, just have to wait till the cream's boiled, boils up, and then pour it straight over the chocolate. And then I've also got 60, is it 60 grams? Yes, so 60 grams of butter as well. But um, you put that in once the chocolate's at body temperature, so that you don't want it to really melt, you just want it to kind of incorporate in uh -oh. it all. That's why you don't put it in the cream or the chocolate to start with. This is nearly boiled. But um, it's always best to do the ganache first or beforehand before you make it all, just so you know it's at the right consistency. So if you stuff it up, you can do it again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you can eat your first lot. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like your thing. <laughs> <laughs> you can still eat it even if it's stuffed up. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's, it's never that stuffed up. No. It's all good. It's always worth <laughs> eating. <laughs> so it's boiled now. Woo! So just pour it over and then stir it around and try to get the chocolate to melt pretty much because you don't want lots of chocolate. So you break up all the chocolate small to break up. Oh yeah, chop it all up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because why do you do that? Because then it melts faster. You don't need lumps of chocolate for it. What a shame. That'd be mm -hmm. gross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in here is five egg whites and make sure when you're using the um, mixer you Put it under, some say skulls, is that the right word? Put it under really hot water? Yeah, put the bowl under really hot water first and clean it all out because it won't, the meringue won't fluff up if it's got stuff in it, if it's contaminated. So put that in. And especially with the egg whites, make sure there's no egg yolks or shell or anything gross in there because it also won't fluff up or taste very nice. It's still on, yeah. So you cheat, if it's stiff peaks, just put it between your fingers, and if it stands up, then it's done. When you're doing meringue, never bang it on the side, because you just let all the air out that you just put into it, and I'm finished. So in here is the ground hazelnuts, the corn flour, and the icing sugar. Um, people here, we don't sell, they don't sell ground hazelnuts, so I just put them in... Well, first I set the magic bullet on fire by accident, and <laughs> <laughs> it started smoking, and yeah, so it's dead. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that didn't work, and then I put them in the food processor and yeah. ground them up. Um, I've also put the butter into the ganache now as well, so it's still warm enough to melt the butter, or to incorporate it properly. So <laughs> Just put all of that and all the dry ingredients in there. And then fold it. So you want to go around the outside first to get everything into the middle. And then go through the bottom and shake it in coming up so that everything disperses evenly. And you want to have absolutely everything ready before you make a meringue. Because it could def it deflate so it's fine anyway. And then you need a pipe a spiral pattern over four discs of 20 centimetres. And then put them in the oven at 160 degrees for 20-ish minutes, 25. But start in the middle, and lift it up. So put them in the oven. So I'll put that off for 15 minutes and then check them. And what you want is, you can kind of take colour, but not burn at the same time. You want them nice and crisp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks like that in my oven anyway. So just turn it around. Kind 
of semi I hopped. Just put the ring that you use to draw the circles. Chop around. Yeah, so who wants some? <laughs>